Do you ever turn on the TV and wonder what the heck happened? Violence, nudity, sloppy writing, and coarse language. Shut the f it seems like every channel is bursting to the rim with nonsense. But of course, it wasn't always like this. Back in the day, there were quality, respectable programs on the tube. I'm talking about shows like The Andy Griffith Show, Hawaii Five-0, and of course, Matlock. And Matlock enjoyed nine seasons and made a cultural legacy that has been massive. Its fans loved the show for its smart, patient writing. And of course, for Ben Matlock. I'm a lawyer. Played by the beloved Andy Griffith. You could always count on Matlock. Thank you, Mr. Matlock. Oh. To pull up in his gray crown Vic and serve some justice. But while Matlock represents to most people a calm and consistent source of quality TV, in reality, things are a bit more complicated. So what was really going on behind the scenes? What was the dark side of Andy Griffith's role? Why was the character of Julie Summers unceremoniously axed? And most importantly, why was this great show pulled from the air right when America needed it most? Today, we're taking a look at the dark side of Matlock, exploring the complicated stories that led to its birth, its life, and its death. Before we begin, hit that thumbs up icon to show support, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Are you ready? Well, grab yourself a hot dog and settle in, because we're going to find out. What, what happened? happened? Why did Matlock move to ABC? Through the 1980s, Matlock was one of the most dependable hits on TV. And while it never had the sensationalism or edge of other programs, that was more than fine with most people. Andy Griffith was no spring chicken when the show premiered, and viewers appreciated the slower pace and thoughtful plotting. But not everybody was happy with the show as it was. And in the late 80s, the president of NBC decided to make some big changes. He thought shows like Matlock were outdated, boring, and most importantly, were not appealing to the younger viewers with shorter attention spans. And this was before TikTok. So what did he do? He axed one of the best TV series of all time just to hopefully make a quick buck. But just when it seemed like it was the end for Matlock, a miracle happened. ABC swooped in. But this miracle quickly turned from a dream to a nightmare for Andy Griffith. The network knew the star power that Andy commanded. And they got greedy. They wanted even more of his time for Matlock, as well as various two-hour movies. Filming Matlock had already been a problem for him. You see, Andy suffered from Gillian Barre syndrome, and his legs would sometimes suffer temporary paralysis. Of course, in many of the courtroom scenes, Andy would have to stand for long periods of time. So he had to wear leg braces just to stay on his feet. And with this in mind, it's a miracle that he filmed the show for as long as he did. So now he was in a tough spot and decided to play hardball. He wouldn't do anything for ABC besides Matlock. And in addition, the show had to move filming from California to North Carolina where Andy lived. It was a big risk even for Andy Griffith. It could have meant the end for Matlock, but of course they agreed. And that's why the show moved to Wilmington that year. Adjusting to the new location was difficult, but hey, the show still had everything it needed. Its star, its premise, and its writers. But the trouble was far from over. The move to North Carolina was going to have some serious consequences for everybody involved. Its ripples would affect not just the show, but the actors' destinies. Why was Julie Summers written off the show? While Matlock was foremost a procedural show, Ben had more opportunities to live life outside the courtroom as the show went on. For example, the character Julie March, played by little-known Julie Summers. Julie was Ben's rival in the courtroom, but his love interest outside of it. But before we got to find out whether she could soften ornery old Ben, the character disappeared. And not with much explanation either. And in real life, Julie Summers never acted again. Ironically enough, Andy never expected the character to be a hit. He said he didn't really know how to write women. 
One reason characters are often taken off shows is that they don't resonate with the audience. But this just wasn't the case with Julie. Her character was a hit on the show, and the fans appreciated the levity and richness she added to a sometimes hard-boiled show. In fact, in 1990, she was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress. But in 1992, when Andy forced the production to North Carolina, well, unlike Andy, Julie lived in California, and she had a family there whom she loved very much. She considered commuting to North Carolina, but she felt that her family life would collapse under that strain. So she made a very tough decision to give up her big break. And unfortunately, leaving such a cash cow must have been a turnoff for other producers, because that was the end of Julie's acting career. She never had a major role, or even a minor one as far as I know, again. For her part, Julie has no regrets about her decision. She has said that while acting was fun, she gets real joy in her life from being home with her family. And viewers did get some closure in the ninth season, where Julie comes back to wrap things up with Ben. But for both actor and character, there will always be a sense of loss for what could have been. Why was Matlock cancelled? While moving the show to North Carolina was a big change for everybody involved, it seemed like the series would survive the shift. But within three years, Matlock would get the axe. So what happened in such a short span of time? The move to Wilmington wasn't the only change on the set of Matlock. The show shifted from a whodunit format to a let's catch the criminal format, in which the viewer is shown the crime from the start, and you see the whole process play out, watching them get caught. Throw in the fact that Julie was far from the only character who left the show because of that move. Despite this drastic change, it seemed like everything would turn out okay. In fact, the show received a momentary boost in ratings, although it was nowhere near its peak. The new North Carolina 7th season did much better than the severely underperforming 6th. But then things started to change. By season 8, ratings sunk again. And more importantly, Andy Griffith was just not committed to the show anymore. Because of his advancing age, he wanted to spend more time with his family and less on a set. So while many TV shows go out in a blaze of glory with a spectacular finale or an abrupt cancellation, Matlock just kind of fizzled out. In the following decades, it would become one of the most syndicated programs of all time. What happened to Andy Griffith? Andy, of course, is best known for his show, The Andy Griffith Show, and also Matlock. Neither of these shows is an average program. They don't rely on cheap thrills or your star of the week. No, they focus on the man himself. And Andy's reliable wit and ornery charm are things you don't see on TV nowadays. Griffith certainly had other roles after Matt Luck. Dozens of bit parts in TV shows and quite a few film roles. But every one of those jobs was fundamentally different from Matt Luck. That show, like The Andy Griffith Show and The Brady Bunch, were not cheap entertainment. Plainly, they were American institutions, cultural figures that everybody knew and everybody could bond over. People learned life lessons from Andy Griffith, and we have to thank him for that. The great Andy Griffith died in 2012 on the coast of North Carolina. He requested that there be no surface, and he was buried within five hours of his death. I think that's just the kind of guy Andy was. He's not flashy, always there to do his job, but never to make a big fuss of things. When Andy Griffith died, a part of America died, a part that we will never get back. So that's the tale of how Matlock was canceled. On one hand, it's a sad story. It shows how the constant push for novelty, ratings, and cheap thrills slowly killed one of the best shows of all time. But Matlock's fate also makes us appreciate it more. Andy Griffith gave everything he had to the show as long as he could, and it wouldn't have made sense to keep pushing. Could the show have gone on without Andy at the helm, with new actors and new life? Or was it destined to end where it did, in North Carolina? Please get in the comments and tell us what you think. Do you still watch Matlock? What's a great episode you recall? 
And finally, were you a fan of Julie's character? Did you miss her after the move? We look forward to reading your thoughts. Before you head out of here to watch Matlock, I assume, please hit that thumbs up icon to show support. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you.